Um, good evening. It's 6 o'clock on November 13th, 2023. Um, I'm Jill Remick. I am the chair calling the Central Vermont Career Center School District board meeting to order. Um, we'd like to start by welcoming our guests. And if you guys don't mind just introducing yourselves, we'll introduce ourselves to you guys as well. Okay. Uh, I'm Chase. Um, I'm an EMS one. I'm Rue. I'm in EMS 2, for the paramedic program. Nice. I'm Jill Remick. Me too. You too. I'm Lyman Castle. Michelle Lehman, the business manager. Jana Osman. Awesome. Flora. Dia Smith. Jody. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the video, we have our board members um, Ashley and Guy and Giuliano and Jason. And Stephanie gets to take minutes. Great. Welcome. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, all right. So I am going to jump right in. Do we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from October 16th? So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Second by floor. Um, any discussion? Any edits to the meeting minutes? You're crushing it, Steph, obviously. Um, all right. Um, all those in favor of approval signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, welcome. So um, thank you guys for being here. You're part of our regular board agenda that we have representation from student leadership come to each meeting. So really glad you're here. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Any questions for us? No, I don't no? think so. Okay. This is an opportunity to say what's been going on here yeah. at the center, if you want. Yeah, I mean, so I was here last year as well. Um, I was in Chase's program um, and it's going really well. I'm doing uh, classes through the Vermont State University, which okay. is really fun. And yeah, it's been really good here. Nice. Yeah. And your team of student leaders facilitated the yes. quarter awards this year, which was phenomenal. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was really fun did it very differently this year and it went really well, which was really exciting. Okay. It paid off. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did those already happen this quarter? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So can I ask a question? Yeah. So you're at Vermont State University and you're getting credits and what's your plan after so, with these credits? Yeah. So right now I'm a licensed EMT um, and I just got a job at the Northfield Ambulance Station. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and um, my plan after, so I'll be a licensed paramedic after this year. Um, so definitely going into the field in the Vermont, just working in the ambulance and maybe the ER, but yeah, definitely using this license. Yeah. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, well, we'll move on to our second reading of our uh, recommended policies. No? You did skip the agenda revisions. Oh, okay, I did. did. And I wanted to let you know that there's no program that's presenting tonight okay. because we have open house this week. And yes, so two late nights would have been a little bit much for yeah. our staff. However, some of Stephanie's students have been collecting some videos about why, why apply to this program and she was willing to share them with you today oh, if okay. you would like to do that sure. in place of the program presentation. Okay. I like that. That yeah. sounds great. I've been seeing them on Instagram, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you probably have, yes. Should we look at those now? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. If everyone's okay yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Steph, you should be able to share your screen. <clears throat> Perfect. So you guys can hear me well? Yep. Yep. Very well. All right, Very so um, I'm pulling up my Instagram. So myself and Tim were talking about the fact that we have shadows coming up here in, um, in a couple of weeks. Uh, right after break, we're starting right on in. So um, we've been talking to the students about dress codes and about the assignment that they will be giving when, the, when they're shadowing and um, all of that great stuff that comes with it and, and the fact that it's a great opportunity for them to really check out the teaching styles of each instructor and to kind of prepare themselves and hype them, them, themselves up for shadowing. 
we're going to be shadowing for the next six or seven weeks after a break. Um, and again, it's a great it's a great way to enhance the admission process for our expo kids. So Tim and I were talking a little bit about our Instagram. <clears throat> and if you guys follow our Instagram, Tim and I post almost every day um, and where we really highlight what's going on in the classroom. So we wanted to showcase the fact that we shadow our students go out and they spend time with each of the programs. So we really wanted to showcase that because we don't get to go out with them. Um, so we thought how cool it would be for our students to take initiative and go out and, and interview a student in that current program. So we had a class meeting and um, we talked a little bit about it and the students were really excited about it. So we made a schedule and um, we started last week and our students go out and give maybe a 30 to 40 um, second interview and they're, they're prompt, they pick two questions. We had a kind of a discussion with what they should ask. And the two questions were um, what their favorite thing is about their program and why should Expo students be excited to shadow their programs? We've got some great responses. So I'm gonna pull up our Instagram and I'm gonna show you a little bit of what our students have been doing. So let me turn that on. And I'm gonna share this screen. All right. So, we're gonna, we'll start off with, we've got eight programs that we've already interviewed. We've got two more. Uh, we're hoping to do one more tomorrow and post it. So this is our first one. Oh. I'm Ryan from Expo and today we're interviewing Connor from Automotive. Um, what's your favorite part about being in automotive? My favorite part about being in automotive is being in here in the shop and it's not a normal classroom so as you work on stuff and it's just fun. Why should we as Expo students be excited to shadow automotive? Um, you come in here for a day, learn, you're probably going to be doing tires, so get ready for that, but it's going to be fun, you know, learn. Yeah. Thank you. So that was our first run through, um, and it's been really neat for our students to pick the student to um, kind of to kind of interview, and um, it's kind of awesome, you know, when our students who are Expo Kids last year step up to the plate and want an interview. So Connor was a student from last year. Um, the following student is also a student in plumbing and heating now, who's also an Expo Kid last year. Here we go. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm Bridge. And we're interviewing Skylar, about the a couple questions we had for the program. So, Scholar, what's your favorite thing about this program? Probably the teachers. The teachers are really open. They're willing to teach us a ton of different things. So today, we're doing brazing, which is like different, which is like kind of med gas, very clean. It's way different. We do not, do not expect to be able to be doing this. So I'm really excited. They're really open, and everyone in the class is really nice. So definitely all that. And why should we be excited as expert students to shout out public? Um, ooh, that's a tough one. Why would you be excited? I guess they're willing, they're willing to let you try everything in here. They're not going to be like, oh, this is too dangerous. Oh, this is going to be too hard. They're going to let you try it all. And if you messed up or not, they're not going to care. They just want you to try it out and see if you like it. So I think I'd be excited for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Alex. So they definitely get a little nervous when they first start off and do that. Next one is cosmetology. I'm Zoe from Expo. I'm from Expo. And we're interviewing Adam here. Yes. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite part? Right here. Um, definitely interacting with outside people who come in 
to get services are and be able to uh, experience a different things in the world. It's always a fun experience. It's nice. Why do you think um, kids can be a shout out to you? Oh, because I think it's a great opportunity, um, especially Cosmo. Um, if you're going in first year, you learn so much, not just because it's money, you just don't care. Um, so definitely some nervous energy next one is our um culinary and baking this one is an excellent one Isabel from Expo. Hi, I'm Brooklyn from Expo. And today we're interviewing Alex from Baking and Culinary. So Alex, what's your favorite thing about culinary and baking and culinary? Probably uh, just getting to be part of the kitchen and part of this wonderful environment and getting to make lots of different things and learn lots of different skills. That was a really good answer. <laughs> um, so Alex, what, why should we be excited to come down to this board during Shadow and Culinary and Baking? I think there are a lot of reasons. Uh, baking culinary is very real. It's a very real profession. Um, it's something that you can really apply to real life very easily. Um, it's a lot of fun and a very high paced environment. So there are lots of really amazing people. Um, and you just get to make awesome food and you get to try it. And that's really cool. Thank you. That was Thank a good you. Thank, Thank you. you. Isabel from Expo. Hi. Then we've got building trades. This student decided to ask some different questions. But again, this student was. Um, this student was a former Expo student, so it kind of all wrapped together. Hi, I'm Emma from Expo. What's your name? I'm Caleb from Building Trades. Okay. What's one career that you want to get into? Uh, I'm either going to become a welder and go to welding school in Ohio, or I plan on actually staying in the career I'm going to school for. What, what program did you attend before? I was in exploratory and I met Dimitri when we did our shadow days and that kind of caught my interest in becoming a person. Uh, what, what advice do you have for getting into uh, Stay on your A game when you're in expo or at your sending school. Don't goof around and do your work. Hi, I'm Emma. And let's see, I think we have... We have a couple more to show you guys. So this is an emergency services student. Again, this is a former um, exploratory student as well. Hi, I'm Brody from Exploratory Technology. I'm Reese from EMS One. Um, I got a couple questions for you. What is your favorite part about EMS? Um, all the hands-on work that we do, uh, especially with the dummy, Randy. He's the main EMS dummy, so. Yep, and then why should us exploratory kids be excited to shadow? Um, we do a lot of fun stuff in here, and like it's a lot of things that not not a lot of kids get to see. So like stuff that's actually in the ambulance, you get to try it out. Like we get to play on the stretcher a lot. Um, we'll practice on each other, strap each other in, put each other on like backboards, mega movers. So it's a lot of fun stuff that you get to do in here. But I also think it's great that we're working to try and add to the healthcare. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Have a good one. Yes, you too. And then we've got another one. We've got two more left. This is a medical professions um, interview. Hi, I'm Victoria from Expo. Hi, I'm Hannah from Expo. And today we're interviewing Lily from MedPro. What's your favorite part about being in medical professions? My favorite part about being in medical professions is definitely the teacher and the teaching environment because we want all new ways to learn and figure out what's the best learning style for all of us. And a lot of the work is very hands-on, so we all learn a lot that way. Why should Expo students be excited to shadow MedPro? They should be excited to shadow MedPro because it's all very exciting, new, and you learn a whole bunch in such a little amount of time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm and last but not least, this is uh, another former Expo student who is in electrical right now. What's up, guys? Gavin here from Expo Tech and Victor Tech from Expo Tech. And today we'll be interviewing our electrical student. What's your name? Uh, Ethan. And uh, my question for you is, what is your favorite part about being about being in the electrical program? Uh, a bunch of great stuff about the electrical program. Um, we learn a lot here. Um, fun time and um, it's a great like great knowledge for the future it gets you to a good career um, to make a lot of money and my question would be why is expert students 
should we be excited to shadow the electrical program? Um, a bunch of reasons, you know, um, the teachers and the students here are um, nice and they're good, I think they're good teachers, you know, you can learn a lot from them. Um, and as I said, this program uh, can get you into a really great career path. Um, you know, get you excited about Thank you, Ethan. Thank you. What's up, guys? So we have let's see, stuff. To, so we we have a lot of really awesome stuff going on. You know, it's, it's the students definitely have this nervous energy going out there to interview their peers, um, and a student is is the one holding the iPad and is is the one filming. So um, they they have to do a little bit of practice and a little bit of. Um, you know, making themselves get out there and kind of going outside their comfort zone. Thank you, Steph. That's awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Look for more to come. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we'll move on to item 2.3, our remaining recommended policies, the second reading. Were there any in particular that folks either had questions about or edits to make? Clarifications. Oops. Guy? Yeah, this question is for Jody. I, I remember at the last meeting, I thought you said there was one policy that's going to be under review that we're going to uh, probably look at again. Can you remind me what that was? That's the equity policy. Um, okay. Life, our equity scholar and resident, is facilitating a committee that's looking at that. And they are probably going to bring some recommendations to you after the staff has been able to revise it, and then student leadership is also going to look at it for feedback, and then they're going to get, bring you a draft. So he's planning on updating the board in January. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions, edits? Question, yeah, go ahead. So should we approve it and then we, we're going to pull it out to yes. be review again in January? Yep. So put it in our to-do list. Okay. All right. We need a motion. Yeah. yeah. Why don't I read them? Why don't I just read them into the record real quick? Um, so these are the policies of the board. Um, student conduct and discipline. Search and seizure of students by school personnel student self-expression and student distribution of literature, transgender and gender non-conforming students, district equity policy, curriculum development and coordination, educational support system, community use of school facilities, the use of school facilities application, fiscal management and general financial accountability, electronic communications use and retention, capitalization of assets, Prevention of conflict of interest in procurement, access control, and electronic surveillance. What's capitalization of assets again? What is that? It's how we track our assets. Okay. How we have to do with the um, mm -hmm. like our financial statements. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion to um, approve these for their second reading? So they come back for a third reading? They can or they can be adopted now. Oh. They can be adopted. Oh. Oh. I move that we adopt them now. Okay. All right, we have a motion to adopt. Okay, second by Guy. Any further discussion? Questions? Can you can you repeat the uh, who made the motion first? Because you said Guy was second. Yep. Um, Jana made the motion to approve or to adopt the policies. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? OK, all right, great. We just got a whole lot of work done. <laughs> thank you for preparing those, Jody. And then it sounds like we will come back and revisit C29, the equity policy, um, later in the school year, based on the work of the equity scholar in residence. OK. And we have more. We have more coming? Okay. <laughs> Different ones, though. Okay. Um, all right, next up we have committee reports. Do we have a report from the Finance Committee? 
Yeah, I forgot I was, the memo. I, I was like, I didn't, I, I didn't want to bug you in the weekend, but I'm just going to share it with you guys. Right yeah, now, there was right. supposed to be a little memo in there so that we want... Next time, bug me. I, I, sorry, <laughs> I just... It was the weekend, and I was... Yeah. So I'm just making you viewers. So we, the can't, we can't really hear you guys. Sorry, Steph. I, I was just saying, and I'll share it with you so that you can make a note. There, there was a memo that I gave... Uh, that I received Jody, on Friday was... and forgot to share. It's okay. Yeah. Are you the new Ashley? I think yeah. Ashley's. Oh, I can. For some reason, we're getting a lot of background. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not mine. I don't. No. Okay. It is. Just want to make sure that I okay. have everybody, so that everybody could be looking at it at the same time. Yeah. But well, I can. Sh mm. Yeah, I'm just doing that now. When I Ashley. switch that screen, what what does everybody see? Stephanie, <laughs> do you see my screen now? I do not. I just see the owl view. Okay. Okay. So the the memo really what, what we spend most of the time talking about. I just share it with you guys. I think I'm missing a couple of people, but you can add more people. And for some reason, it's not letting me send it. Oh, share anyway. Can you share your screen? Yeah. Oh, I can share my screen, but I'm not in the. Oh, yeah. So we spend most of the time talking about the budget and the next steps for the budget. Jill was there uh, with us too, so trying to tie in together what is best outcomes for kids. We had asked uh, Jody to take away her superintendent hat and put her director hat in order to look mm -hmm. uh, to look at the budget. And so we discussed the budget with that that eye. We came to the conclusion, and we'll talk a little bit because I don't know that we're ready to. Sh share that right now. We'll talk more about the budget later, but what we felt at the Finance Committee is that we needed some parameters in order to help them sort of narrow down and come back with a draft uh, for us. So the memo that I just shared with you guys, and I'm sure I'm missing, I'm missing a couple of people, and I'll, Jason, I think I missed your email, but I will do it right now, is if we think about the budget with an educational equity lens, I actually use a lot of the language from the equity policy at the beginning. So what is best for all kids? We came up with four parameters, maybe, that we want to brainstorm with you. Number one would be develop the Central Vermont Career Center budget towards a full day program that realizes program quality improvements and results in improved student outcomes. And that means develop towards a full day program is because we're not exactly sure that we're going to be able to do it this year. But we all the work that we're doing will get us there, so nothing that we're doing will set us back. That makes sense. So that was parameter number one. Number two, explore opportunities for collaboration across our sending districts in support of this work. Mm -hmm. Number three is consider configuration changes that realizes program quality improvements that can serve more students. More students. And number four, which was also a brainstorm, is we could give them a percentage increase between level services and the desired state. And just to throw some numbers up, right, that could be anything between 14 and 25 percent, mm -hmm. which we know it's 25 is too much, 14 might not be <laughs> enough. Not. So, you know, an inflation rate is 3. Point, what did we say? 7.6. 7. And uh, so those, that's what we have to discuss today. <laughs> so if, I don't know if the first few ones made sense. I, don't, I know that you can't quite see them there, but I emailed them to you guys. You can also join the Google Meet and share them on the screen. That might be the easiest. Yeah, so hold on one second. I'm going to join the Google Because I can't do it without opening my yeah. email in front of everybody. Yeah, so hold on. Join Google Meet. Allow. Join now, because that might be easier. And if, and if, and if you two are not captive for the entire meeting, by the way. So when you need to, you can. Wait, I have to double mute. That should have. Oops. I'm muted now. No? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now let me share my screen. Present now. Allow share window. Allow to share going to share my very messy desktop. Don't get scared of how many things are open. <laughs> Wait, can you see my screen? Yeah. Are you seeing no. my screen right now? No. There we go. Soon. Oh, okay. Here we go. 
Okay, so now <laughs> it's in another meeting, sorry. Oops, not LMC, wait. Um, you'll get there. I'm gonna get there. I was just there. So would the idea be that we as a board have a discussion now to send back with Jody okay. and Michelle and then in December we would have like a draft? Yeah, that would be okay. that would be ideal to keep the, to give them some direction because right now you know, so if you look, I can make my screen a little bigger. Is that makes it a mm -hmm. little better for you guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, those are th that is just what our equity right. policy That's basically said. Yeah. said uh, which is what we want to keep in mind when we're developing a budget, mm -hmm. and it's that umbrella that we're hoping to use. And these are the four parameters that we were thinking. Mm -hmm. The one with the question mark at the end is should we try to think about a percentage? I think the first three ones, uh, unless we want to wordsmith them, I don't know. I'm open for feedback, so. Giuliano guy, I don't know. <laughs> can you see them there? Yeah, I can see them. Yeah, yes, I can see them, yeah. I'm all set, thank you. Okay. And also, just for context, as far as percentage goes, there's a lot of pieces that all school boards are are grappling with this, this year because um, the statewide health insurance has gone up pretty significantly. And then a lot of us have collective bargaining agreements. So there's there's places that already, you know, that are outside of the control of the board discussion. And that, that makes it tough because that means we're really having to sort of dig into what we can control, which is staffing and programs in the building and I had one question does the new formula statewide formula impact us at all no because no, their funding is different with the Perkins right so, okay uh, okay well it, it impacts good. your impacts your sending district oh, yes. and right. we impact our sending districts right. which is a little unfair but but yeah. it is something that we have to keep in mind right because right. we are sending this back to our sending districts that are already being with not tax I don't mean tax yeah. by tax I mean stress by the in different ways mm -hmm. right so Montpelier is more stressed than most of our sending districts were mm -hmm. not as as impacted yeah. so are you saying Jill that because we don't know exactly what the percentage increase is going to be for health insurance and all of that this is just kind of a just a guesstimate of what we think an increase should be, but it could be out of line because there were so many other added expenses? No, sorry if I said that wrong. So we do know health wrong, insurance is up, what, 14%? 16%. And, um, and, you know, we're close to our collective bargaining agreement being situated, so that's, you know, that was sort of what we had mm -hmm. budgeted for. So I guess what I was saying is those are things that are kind of set in stone. Right. So the question is how... How do we operate? How do we, that? yeah, yeah, and what are some either adjustments that we make so that we can keep the, the quality high mm -hmm. and the experience high, but it might be less programs at some extreme, mm -hmm. or, you know, using the programs differently, or finding space for things, or, you know, what do we, go ahead, Guy. So, uh, just so I understand, does the, the full day piece in number one fall under the desired state in number four or does it fall into level services in number four no num number four the percentage increase between level service and desired state should be something in between right not uh, we know that we can't have everything am i understanding your question i right? think he was saying is full day a desired state or oh, is that a level where was it Oh, it was in it's the. A it's in a both. mixture of both. Because in level services, we have, we already have three additional staff members, two and a half additional staff members, and we need to bring in more mm -hmm. staff members. So basically, the question is: is we know we have these expenses that are coming up that are set in stone. With any additional ex increases that we want to make, where should we focus that onto? Should we focus that onto bringing these full day? services, should, which means more academic teachers? 
should we focus on expanding, getting, making partner agreements and and expanding, you know, our programming choices? Like, where, how, what do we do this year to get us to where we want to go in five mm -hmm. years? And that's yeah. really a board discussion. So it's going to cost more. I mean, a lot more because we're hiring all these new faculty. Isn't it? Isn't it like our sending schools hiring faculty? You know, I mean, they have to, it has to get paid for. So it increases the amount of, does it, how does it impact tuition? Doesn't. It does. It does. would. There'll be an impact. Because it's full day from half day to full day. Not, Not the amount this. of tuition that we receive. Our tuition is set, but it will increase the tuition that we are charging because we have increased costs. Our six semester average of students is nothing we can change. But the amount of budget divided by those students mm -hmm. is where we have to make some decisions. And as the years go on, we were seeing these very large increases of our six semester average. I'm talking 15 students, mm -hmm. 10, 15 students. Mm -hmm. This year, I'm seeing maybe 10 additional students. Next year, I'm seeing less and less. We're reaching our capacity of enrollment, yep. and so the the semester average is just mm -hmm. eventually it should be level. 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 Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I I see like parameter one. The idea of parameter one is to give you like a soft parameter, saying let's move towards a full day without saying let's do a full day. So is that Mm -hmm. provide enough clarity on yep. on that one and then on the so we're, we're kind of asking for everything <laughs> with the bread and the second program is like yeah explore opportunities of collaboration so that we can have you know a, more programs which is part of the third parameter right so concern mm -hmm. configuration changes that realize that maybe the two and three could be together I don't know configuration changes that realizes program quality improvements that can serve more students, because we know we want to serve more students, because we're not right. taking all the students right. that we there want. There are 200 students we couldn't serve. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, go ahead. Do you want to finish what you're saying? So, and then the last one is where, where I think we could provide a little bit more of like a little box in some ways, mm -hmm. right? A, a percentage, even if we're just guesstimating mm -hmm. at the moment. We know 16% is the healthcare, and, and we know more or less that the desired state was almost all the way up to 25, and we can't quite the wish get list. The, yeah. the wish list, you know, yeah. the, the wish list. So, so do we try to stay with the 16% already that we know that is mm -hmm. healthcare? Is that, or is that helpful? I'm just trying to decide what it would be, not decide, but try to brainstorm what would be helpful for you guys. It's still a guess. Right. And I, I'm not sure that param parameters is great. It gives us an idea of where to go, but almost like I need like a prior, prioritized list. Mm -hmm. What is going forward in the next five years, what is the priority? Is the priority to have more students so we fill all of our programs multiple times? Is it going to be to... It, you know, ultimately it will be a new space, but in the meantime, is the priority to expand within the structure, the, the structure, or outside? Mm -hmm. Is it is should we put programs on hold for a minute and talk about full day academics? Like mm -hmm. prioritizing right. within these parameters? Like yes, I mean, and I guess what we're saying is that we don't want to be. Giving. That prescriptive. Right. We don't. We don't want to be that prescriptive because we don't know the student needs. We shouldn't be the ones telling you. Mm -hmm. You gotta mm -hmm. just invest on. You know. You, you know. We're giving you a structure to work with with the student needs that you have. Because you know, like right now, I don't want to set. And, and I know Jill would feel the same way. And you guys, we don't want to set a precedent that we, the board, mm -hmm. sort of micromanage. You need to add three programs. You know. Mm -hmm. Th that shouldn't be us, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I, in my mind, you know, that should be you guys collaborating mm -hmm. with the sending districts and seeing what the priorities are. What are the students saying? You know, like, what are the student needs? You, your guys are boots on the ground, right? Mm -hmm. We're saying let's move towards a full year, mm -hmm. prioritize right now because we're strong with money on how that we can, you know, achieve 
some of the that and not go backwards and, next right. year. And can we implement a welding program, which we've been talking about for two yeah. years? You know. No, maybe not. No. You cannot have it all. I'll tell you, <laughs> we can't do both. We cannot. There's no way we're going to be able to hire academic teachers and and have another program. Yes. It's not going to fit in the budget. Well, that's, so that's important what I'm to know. So that's right. right. So we need to so prioritize. Then we change our thinking. Right. Yeah. I mean, and the other thing that's coming with this welding program, yes, there's there's going to be a highly qualified teacher or industry professional that comes in. So the cost of that salary is going mm -hmm. likely going to be higher than it would if we've got. Um, a science teacher that mm -hmm. could come in with a four-year degree type right, thing, right. but also the space of that we we don't have the space for that here. Right. We would have to find right. space for that there. We have it, the cost of the Granite Museum. We have that offsite, and that cost is increasing. Oh, really? So it, it's kind of even this facility's use cost is going to increase. This yeah. facility? Oh yeah, of course. I have budgeted at least 6% because that's really? what it went up last oh, year. Wow. And that's without taking on any additional space. Mm -hmm. But that's another question. Is there more space here? We've been asking for asking for asking mm -hmm. for it. Is there more space that we can utilize here? Is it ever possible that the reality of the new space will be realized? We got to find the facilities. Yes. <laughs> Update it. We got to get there. <laughs> Guy, did you have your hand up? Uh, I, I, I did. Um, so the, the the thing that I'm most alarmed about at this point is when I heard the stat the other night that, correct me if I'm wrong, Jody, but have we turned away 200 students thus far? Um, we had 400 applicants. We accepted 208 from last year. So it was last year's data. Okay. So, you know, for me, in terms of the budgeting piece, you know, I, it, there's two sides of this. Uh, one is you know, we're missing out on revenue because we have some potential quote unquote customers that we could, you know, be working with. And then I guess the other, and I may have asked this before, but do, does the tuition end up being different if we go full day? No. So let me play devil's advocate. <laughs> if if we're going to spend more money to go full day, not get any more revenue than <laughs> now, and we're leaving out roughly 200 students, for me something doesn't equate, and I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm missing something, and uh, I don't know why I'm just coming to that conclusion, but. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if you, it, you know, the, the, the conundrum I have is, you know, can we impact more students potentially at the same revenue stream or uh, maybe improve the program by going full time? That's what I'm struggling with. Is there at the risk of micromanaging, which I agree, I do not want to do, but it was interesting for you to say we can't do the welding and the full day. And it would be really interesting to see numbers with each of these things and be like, if we did a little of this and a little of this and a little of this, where would that budget come? And if we did a little bit of this and a little bit of this, where would that come to? Is that a, and yes. is that a, is that a reasonable ask? I don't know. I've never. Yes. And I think that's yes. what we're asking. It's a future full day. Right. What is that? What does that look, look like? What does that look like? Incorporate some quality improvements. You know, you guys have been working on your quality committee that you know, and some partnerships mm -hmm. to to serve more students. So we're kind of asking you for for all. And I just added the word future because I think it was confusing there. We're not saying do full day next year, but whatever work you do, work towards and a I full think day. The point of the full day was was to be able to utilize our space to have more students. So in the first year, that schedule kind of morphed into not being able to utilize our space for two programs at the time. So originally it was, oh, they'll have a classroom space here and then shop space here, so maybe we can hold more classrooms. But eventually that morphed, so that full day, as of this moment, it 
the draft of the schedule would not allow for multiple programs to use multiple spaces, shop spaces, classroom right. spaces we would. Um, so, are most of our sending schools in favor of a full day? Most, I know two aren't, but. I think two are, wish we'd done it last year. Mm -hmm. um, two are kind of on the fence mm -hmm. and two are not. Yeah thrilled with the impact it will have on them. Yep. And I think it's hard, kind of hard to weight schools evenly. Right. Because, yes, everybody has a say, but the amount of students that we're serving in each population is right. different. Absolutely. And so some of those heavy hitters are really pushing for a full day. Yeah. And, and those are the schools that send the most students. They are. Right. right. They are. But I didn't, we were. We were not moving just because our Senate, because part of having a district board, right, is that we're not a RAP, you're, we're not an advisory board. Right. And what we were seeing is that that's what it was, best outcomes for kids, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if we were able to have them full time, the benefit of doing the academics is that it was making them also be better, not be better, that's not the right word, you guys help me. It will give them the shot in the arm that they needed in order to perform better in the other stuff because they were getting the literacy help or whatever right. and they were not commuting between schools right. so right. it's not just because so, so partly that. is yes we have to listen to our sending schools but we also have the ability to serve our kids to what they need right mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the whole point yeah. of having better quality programs mm -hmm. and having this is it all or nothing no no no, no. No, I mean, so you have four schools that are on and two schools that are on. Oh, like everybody moves to full day or, or that's something oh. that we could just oh. look at in the future. I'm not sure how that would work. It sort of is because of the way that you would need to structure the schedule to allow academics oh, to right. be across the day. Otherwise, I right. mean, you can't have 100 right. Right. kids in one class, right? right? So you do have yeah, to have it. a schedule that allows right. flexibility. What would it be like if you were here for all of the things that you need academically? I don't know if either of you returned to your sending school for classes. Yeah, I didn't because I got my credits last year, so I didn't need to. Yeah, I do. I mean, I feel like it wouldn't be horrible, but I also feel like um, depending on, I guess, the kind of statistic I would look at is what uh, what percentage of students from farther sending schools are getting sent here and so like Spalding like I go to just every day I just leave like I just go over and go to school class but I can see like distant schools farther distant schools I can understand why they would want to push for more of a full day but I would say look at the statistical thing for how many students is the farther school send, sending instead of the school that's way closer sending. Like yeah. Carwood is probably the furthest, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some of your peers, I don't know, do you have a third yeah. block class? I do, yeah. Okay. So you go to that class late every day every because day, yeah. of your schedule. So yeah. that disadvantages you in that class. Yeah. I, my teacher works around it again, but I feel like I do see where you're coming from. I guess it would make more sense if it was built into the schedule that we just mm -hmm. stayed at CBCC instead of moving to our sending school and just continuing our own program there. I think also I've heard from peers that, so I go, my sending school is Montpelier, and I think the, you know, plus side to having everything here is like, it's two different environments, you yeah. know, like being here is completely different than being at Montpelier High School. Mm -hmm. Like it's totally different and I think for students who really like the environment here which is you know a great majority of the students really love it here so I think that like for the students that you know changing that environment is really can be hard to like have yeah. to manage both environments and you know I never had to do classes but I have friends that do you know classes at MHS and classes here and that's you know, the workload is different too. You know, they don't know what you're doing in your program very well. 
and they don't know, you know, the workload. Like, I was, you know, I'm in EMS, that workload is pretty high, and like, if I had to do an English class where the teacher had no idea the book work that I was also doing would be pretty challenging, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. That's really telling. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that 30 minute plus bus ride right. between here and Harwood, and then having to take an academic class. That may not be something you're even interested in because you're trying to meet the requirements of the school. So that. And you go to university. Yeah. <laughs> that 25 number, 25% number, that was the like everything. That was the dream. That was the like <laughs> full day and new program. And new program, and I think also splitting uh, baking and culinary, so that's another, mm -hmm. so two right. additional spaces that we would need to find. I just want to try and, and it's wrap also, my head around what 25 It's also 25% of a $4 million budget. Right. Not the size of budgets of our sending schools. Right. right. So it's another million dollars. Yes. Yeah. And it's sixteen percent is already just <coughs> just health care. Fourteen percent. Fourteen percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Level funded is fourteen. Oh, right. Okay. So the health insurance yeah, went up sixteen percent. Yeah. Which means that our overall level funded budget is going up fourteen percent. Correct. So you're saying the sweet spot is somewhere between fourteen and twenty five or a range. Or a range within yeah. that. Yeah. So we could you know, we could say, you know, I don't know, I, I'm just throwing numbers and that's not my, writing the memo could be my specialty. Just throwing those numbers is not my. So, you know, we could say anything between 16 and 14, 18, I don't know. I, I just, 18 the, sounds like a good number. I mean, that's what you're <laughs> like that's, I, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't have anything to, you know. Uh, but I, I think, think you, thank you so much. You can leave that here too. It has really oh, helped steer. Awesome. Thank you, you guys yeah. so much. Yeah. I do because it was like I was almost under the like we go this way or we go this way rather than okay. Let's, yes. That's always the wish. Yeah. Well, I think what we want you is to be creative and uh, and allow you to move the program forward for the future, right? right. Mm -hmm. That's where we're trying to set ourselves. Well, what I'm hearing too is we we want to serve as many students as possible in as high quality as possible. So if there are some that are underutilized, like if there are some that are, there are programs that, that are being underutilized, mm -hmm. but we have a way to expand capacity and some other ones that are in high demand, like that might be something. Um, or add the new program and ditch and, the program that's not being successful. Right. Um, and that would theoretically allow us to have more students Right. If we if we added welding, we'd have more yeah, students, but right. we'd also have the cost of the industry. welding. But right. we know that that is something the community is really clamoring really for. That. The students, yeah. even the students in some right. of the existing programs, want that. So if we're going to like sort of take a, a leap, it seems like the data is kind of showing us that's one that we feel pretty confident would have good turnout right. for. And did that student say he was going to study in New Hampshire or Ohio? Ohio yeah. or something? It's like a I mean, welding school. That's and, like yeah. So I could see that, right? I could see us sort of, we don't want to just level fund and not, but we want to keep building. quality, we, we want to keep growing. building, we want to keep making sure we serve as many students as possible mm -hmm. with the high quality program as possible. So, and there is that demand for, and I'm not in any way an expert, but like that is something I feel like the data, like the research has right. shown is the demand is there, the community supports that. Yeah, that's not right. that's not that's not grand and extravagant to add one high demand program. Well, is it? But is there something that would need to? A <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, couple of our programs are half funded through grants still. There is, yes, some of our programming is in grants still. So again, we have to think about right. So one that of them is, is the instructor salary and benefits is 50% in a grant that's coming out. So that's part of the level funded mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. One instructor will take a quarter of their salary and benefits out next year. 
that's part of it's already incorporated into that level funded budget. Hmm. I'm so, going to stop presenting so we can see okay. you guys better. It sounds like it's going to be a tough budget year for all of our schools then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tomorrow night will be. Okay. And you know, Jody will continue to advocate. You guys saw her email today. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was great. It was yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Well, what I'm hearing tonight, and what I like is, can we cut something and really respond to a community demand, like for welding, and and in good faith have the community embrace? You see, we said there was this need that we responded and we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like we have to show growth or develop, developmental growth. Mm -hmm. Whatever that program is, I'm just very right. big into. Mm -hmm. You decide. You know, right. You decide what, what right. that program that will bring we more kids. We have a kids. process, too. You have, a, pro you have a process, exactly. That we yeah. need to follow. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's that? Okay, that was so a long some finance ideas committee that we can, report. You got some ideas? To throw around for a yeah. draft. No, yeah. no, that's what I mean. That you, includes, it, we've yeah, given right. you some guidance. Yeah. And I'm yes. not hearing any board members say, let's shoot for the moon and, and be extravagant. I think we all are in the reality of this year's budget and the cost of things that we don't have any control over. But we definitely don't want to <coughs> reduce the quality of what we're offering here. So would it be okay to do a motion to approve the parameters as they are, and so that you have clear guidance from us? And you know, does that make sense? You could. I don't necessarily think you had to be. You discussed it. It wasn't warned as an action item. I think yeah. the information okay. you've given, given us has provided, provided us a okay. good yeah. information. Okay. And so then we'll come back our December meeting and have a good chunk of the agenda probably dedicated to talking through this and looking at some of the specifics and um and, and maybe making a decision because the next night I'm at Montpelier's meeting to share our budget presentation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking off the road show on December sixth. Uh, in Montpelier. Okay. Oh my God. You're on the road. <laughs> All right. Um, everyone, good on on finance and food for thought, and keep thinking about it, and review what floor road and as the chair of the finance committee, yeah. folks have other thoughts, but yeah, well, you guys can, you know, we can change the parameters as needed. So. We can discuss them at the next meeting too, but I think mm -hmm. we gave them guidance. I didn't, oh, there it is. All right, so we'll move on to an update from the facilities committee. I know Terry's not here. I was supposed to report it. That oh. one, we did the. We had the charge, which we reviewed the last time. Yeah. Two. Was that in here? No. What? I don't know if I have that document. Guy was oh, the there too. The facilities charge? The facility, yeah. I think so it we, is in the updated. Um, I thought it was in the updated packet. Yeah, it's right. Might not have, maybe not the charge? What page? page eight? Yeah, in the page eight of the. Uh, yeah. I can't remember if we were able to review it at the last meeting. Did we review it at the last meeting? I don't know. I don't know. But this is what we review at our meeting. So the Central Vermont Career Center Facilities Committee provides the board with recommendations to address existing and future <coughs> space requirements. The committee will make recommendations for short-term needs as well as for planning of a state-of-the-art facility that supports a safe and accessible learning environment for eligible students in the region. Is cost effective and for the taxpayers, energy efficient, adaptable for the future, and the members of the committee, you know, those can 
change, but this is what you have right now. Terry is the chair. Juliano sits with us and myself. And Guy was there, too. Yeah, so we should add Guy. He's to, on there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we have two uh, other committee members, uh, Andy Shapiro, who would start to come at the next meeting, and um, uh, Michael, what is Michael's, Mike's last name? Uh, the planner. Yeah, Superintendent Harbor. Uh, and we meet on Tuesdays from 5 to 6. The other thing that we did that is not part of here, we had a SMART goal. Page 5. Page 5. So this was the SMART goal. Can, does everybody have it out, or you want me to read it out loud? We can do both. Okay, the ability to serve all eligible students in our region and to provide programming that fulfills the needs of students, employers, and community are key points in the Central Vermont Career Center board goals. Our present facilities prevent us from doing so. By 2028, Central Vermont Career Center will have a state-of-the-art facility that serves all eligible students in our region staffed and resourced appropriately. We will realize an increased enrollment versus applicant percentage as well as an altered and added programming for previous years. And just uh, I thought that we updated that one. I this is not did. right. That's not the, sorry guys, that's not, we updated it. Um, let me look at the, and I can share my screen. I better prepare for that. Okay. Um, no. <coughs> Sorry, one minute. Okay. Was that the what? Yeah, no, this, that's all. The ability, okay, so the proposed SMART goal as of our last meeting is, is similar. There's a couple of things that, that change. Yeah, let me see. So the specific, I, we already read that upper part, but the specific part that we'll be doing is what will be accomplished, a state-of-the-art facility, uh, what actions do we need to take is gather and write educational specifications and create a vision board. Uh, what will be needed, what needs to be involved to achieve this goal is the committee, an architect, and a request for proposals. What is the goal? Our current facility doesn't meet the needs of our students, and we will be able to, uh, there was something that we went back and forth talking in the committee, and it's that, you know, that doesn't mean that we won't be looking at the existing facility anyway. This is kind of going back to square one. What do we need to, to do? The main goal is to have a state-of-the-art facility, but it doesn't mean that we are not going to look at our existing facility mm -hmm. to be able to best serve the needs of our students at the moment. Um, and then we go into if it's measurable and, uh, and is it doable, and it is doable. Uh, and help support the mission of, I'm just going into what is relevant mm -hmm. instead of reading the entire, the, so it is measurable, is achievable, is relevant, and the time bound, which is what everybody want to hear, we're saying three to five years, and we will provide progress reports, and our next meeting, we're hoping to yeah. engage back with Turex and Collings, is what we said, and Jody was going to make that call and that's where we are okay actually that was the request that we do that um, which may mean contracting with them so the board needs to approve that, that before they, I can reach out yeah so that was the recommendation of the facilities committee so okay. we would need a motion to the Jody reach out to them to and who's the them again Trix and Collins. Collins. Yeah, who had done already some of the work. And for something like that, we wouldn't need to go out for three bids or anything? We already have done I think because we'd already contracted with oh. them and they've done all that work, that we would just need to be able to contract with them to, like, 
identify next steps. Yeah. Okay. And we were assuming that it's not going to be over because the threshold now is a little bigger and it's not going to be over the 15. Actually, it's bigger than 15 it's now. Than it's 20, 40. 40, but our, ours says 15 as for board approval. Yeah. So much smaller. Yeah. So it's just. There is some step. feedback going on right now that's making it hard for you guys to hear. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I wonder if there was an RFP that went out originally. It, there, there was, was an RFP was, that went out originally. So we just double check. I'll just double check on that. So okay. we've got two things. So are there any questions or comments or clarifications from board members before we make a motion? You guys good on the screen? Okay, great. Yep. Thanks. Um, so we're looking for a motion to have um, our superintendent reach out to Trex Collins to um, for next steps for next steps on our facility development as we have an existing contract with them it sounds like I have a motion so moved. thanks Thank Giuliano you. do I have a second I'll second, second, okay. second by Lyme and our guy uh, any further discussion okay all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 aye, aye. aye. great thanks any opposed Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, program quality. Can we read that? Sure. So next up, program quality. Well, it's finance, but we went through that already. Um, the program quality committee provides the necessary support to the Central Vermont Career Center administration and staff to meet the program programmatic and pedagogical benchmarks set forth by the board. The committee reviews the results of state assessment data, both internal and external surveys, and reports from accreditors to ensure that the school is providing the most effective educational experience to our students. The committee, in concert with the superintendent, will review the school's progress toward the curricular goals laid out by the administration and will report any recommendations for funding, programmatic changes, or educational needs to the board as initiated by the superintendent Members to be included in the committee are as follows. It's really just Lyman and me. Mm -hmm. um, the program quality meetings, Ashley is not really able to attend. Um, the program quality, we meet on every second Monday of the month from at 5 p.m. to 5.45 before our meeting here. Go ahead, Ashley. I should be able to um, I, it should work out that I'll be able to attend some, oh, great. But not all. Awesome. Okay, fabulous. I, I do, yeah, I don't, I do have a conflict because some of mine, my bond, I'm on, we're doing a bond with right. Truex Collins right now and, and I, and I have a lot of meetings and sometimes they almost exactly right. conflict, but it, it shouldn't happen all the time. So I'm, next time I hope to be at the committee. Whenever you five. can, we, we look forward to having you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Great. Um, our, 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 uh, our smart goal smart isn't, goals isn't, isn't in here. And I wasn't we'll, gonna... we'll work on that. Yeah, That's not for our next go. thing. I yeah. don't know. We'll find <laughs> it. Um, we did spend time this week. Uh, looking over a lot of the data that was presented to the CLNA. group for the CLNA. Okay. Um, a lot of great information on where we are. Um, and so we look forward to continuing that those discussions. And it just seems that a lot of that carried over in our general conversation as we've been discussing all these other areas, how many courses are full you know, mm -hmm. the fact that 200 students, about, you know, 50% mm -hmm. of our students didn't make it, you know, and so forth. So, and then questions about welding and what other programs. So we've kind of touched on everything. There's a lot of cohesion in our conversation tonight. Yeah. Great. Uh, any other questions or comments? This is crazy. Ashley, is that an old hand? Old hand. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you, program quality team. Um, next up is negotiations. That's myself, Guy, and Jason. We are going to go into executive session later tonight to provide you folks an update. Unbelievable. Okay. 
<laughs> You'll believe it when you see it. Um, all right, next up, the board handbook draft. We haven't worked on, is there a subcommittee working on that? Do you want a subcommittee? <laughs> subcommittee of one. And I have been time. taking notes because I certainly need to update several pieces of it. So uh, yeah, I've need to taken notes that some. we need to make sure that all of the goals are aligned in there and that the charters are accurate. And then I know that Guy has been continuously asking about linking advisory board information in there. So I need to do that as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all that on top of everything. Could I add one thing? Um, I was reading about education for the board, uh, yes. and my thought was if there was any way to include um, things that would be good for new board members to. Yeah, that's to, that was, to, supposed to be my stuff. Yeah, sorry. I, was, I told Jody that I would put that there. Because it was helpful going to the, yeah. to the yeah. board meeting. Could we yeah. have a report out just on how the conference went? It's not. Oh, it's not. That would be. <laughs> we do see it says advisory board reflection, which is from last meeting and not necessary for this one. So right there, we can replace that <laughs> with you, conference yeah. reflection. Excellent. And that accounts payable. We weren't able to have our usual executive committee meeting, and so a bunch of these things got missed that shouldn't have. So that should be October, Sorry. not September. Yeah. And Jill, sorry, can I? To yeah, add yeah. to what Lyman was saying is that we, I'll add the link to the governance standards there too because that's going to be another thing that will help us next year because yeah. okay. we will have to be compliant with governance standards mm -hmm. and then guide sort of the education of the board too. We're already operating with that eye, right. but not. Formalized it will make it more okay. clear. Yeah. Okay. Or at least we've been trying to set ourselves yes. in that. A uh, guy? Excuse me, I'm having a coughing attack here. Um, not to give Jody any more work, but the, <laughs> the advocacy uh, pieces that you sent out today, I thought the the the, um, the references and the links that you had in there were very educational in terms of um, you know like background in terms of the, the history. And I'm, I'm wondering if if somehow we can incorporate those links. Uh, because no matter how long I've been involved, there was new stuff there that I hadn't, you know, I hadn't really heard about, really read about before. And I thought it was pretty informative, but, you know, I don't want to make this a Bible either. Thank you. <laughs> and I um, cannot take credit for that those links in that piece. Although I did help edit it, that actually was created by Scott Farr, who's the director, the president of our VACTED group this year, mm -hmm. so the Vermont Association of CTE Directors, and he's lived through a lot of those. So he had a great deal of that information. So those links in that document that was signed off by the executive committee of VACTED, th that came primarily from Scott Farr. So I'll let him know that you guys really appreciated yeah. the resources great. that really he good. shared yeah. there. Okay, anything else on the board handbook? I'm just wondering what happened to our missing paper. We'll, we'll, we'll find it. We'll okay. find it. I got it in here somewhere. All right. Uh, next up, would you like to provide an update on the VSA VSBA conference? Thank you for representing us. You were representing your center, too. It was great. Uh, yeah, but you ran it. I mean, <laughs> Flora is. She's it. She is yeah. it. I mean, <laughs> a lot of air time. <laughs> I didn't know that way, but I. But, yeah. A lot of kudos. It, it was, yeah, but it was, you know, it was a joint effort in Chelsea and, mm -hmm. I, and um, Debbie from BSBA sort mm -hmm. of really put the conference together, and there was a lot of. Uh, a lot of learning for everybody and so there was some workshops on policy there was some workshops so Jess and Sandra ran the policy part this year we divided mm -hmm. it in four to make sure that they were aligned <coughs> with the governance standards so one was in policy mm -hmm. and that was Sandra and, uh, and Jess the Carolis from okay. they ran that sort of to show board members you know how to work on policy nice. and, and look at it but with a specific policy in in, in mind which is the health policy that is changing so they like 
hands on on mm -hmm. that, and you could take decision in the morning, decision in the afternoon. There was an one on budget that uh, Jeff Francis um, mm -hmm. ran, mm -hmm. and then there was one on uh, a, um, a done by the uh, what's her name, the um, which is mostly an open open meeting law, and that was run by by Cara and okay. our. Secretary, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. her Secretary of State. Boucher. No, no, not not, not their Secretary of Education. Oh, Sarah Copeland Hanson. Yes, yeah. and her sister. Yeah. So Sarah was there. I'm sorry, I'm too many. There was one on today. onboarding new board members from a couple of superintendents. That yeah. was good. Yes, yeah. yeah. and that was that was really good. And then we had two panelists. One was a, a superintendent that has. And he also did the two pieces of the, the standards that were not covered by these four workshops. And that was really well received, you know, because he yeah. was a hands on, even though he was not from, from the state. It was very much, or uh, it's the uh, best student outcomes with a governance mind in, in, uh, in mind to know what, is, what does good governance look like in order to achieve outcomes for okay. kids. And then the other presentation was on uh, it, she, it, yes, a, a, a little depressing but real. And I think this is important for everybody to to know because this is going to be the conversation of this of this year. They, um, uh, Jennifer Berkshire. I don't know if I'm saying the name yeah. right. Berkshire. 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 Yeah, because it was like <laughs> yeah, it's like the mountains. <laughs> uh, she has a, a podcast with Jack. Uh, I don't know Jack's last name. But they have a post. They have you heard? Is the name of the post podcast? But she really, it, the one quote that stayed on my mind a lot was like, "There's uh, some states in in the country that are a decade away of not having public education." Right. And mm -hmm. and and she talked a lot about you know what it means to you know if you're in a public education system you have rights if you're not in a public education system you do not have <laughs> rights and you it, in system I mean be, the difference between independent and public and I don't really want to get into that right now but just an awareness of uh, so or the way that schools about can the privatization of public education mm -hmm. yes yes yes. Yep. yes and yes. and, and some of the examples from New Hampshire were really eye opening I think when talking about the micro schools and the fact that this is a business out of another state mm -hmm. and that the folks that are leading that those schools they don't have to have any training they have no yes license. they have to have a background check but they're not there's not the same oversight that there is right. by the state of mm -hmm. the public education that we have they're not held accountable there's right. no accountability no 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 accountability and talking about moving to a voucher system which like I think categorizes like an educate yeah. and so, mm -hmm. so the folks that have the money and can afford it can pay for whatever educational experience for their kids and mm -hmm. everybody else can only afford whatever this voucher, voucher. amount is mm -hmm. yeah. which leads to less access, access less equity yeah Did they talk about charter schools at all uh, no, but the charter schools are part of she explained it very briefly mm -hmm. the charter schools are part of that non uh, Non-compliant. Non-compliant. So you know, and in and in Vermont, we could move into having we, we already have two different sets of standards for for our schools. So the more that we keep going that way, the more that we sort of move away from having a you democratic mean, society. Schools and public schools. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's different. So we're working on the Rule 2000 standards right now, and so we're not all both. We're not being held accountable to the mm -hmm. same standard, mm -hmm. right? And what we're hoping is that all our schools, whether they're independent or public, mm -hmm. that are receiving public money, mm -hmm. are held to the right. same standard. And then you have homeschool education, which is a whole other Yeah, of Yeah, and, and that's always going to going to be there and she didn't get too much into it but I would encourage you guys to listen to those mm -hmm. uh, to those podcasts okay. that Tell are me really the name again uh, have you heard have you heard uh, yeah and, and then there was Richard. students from Harwood and, they, and that facilitated the Harkness model which was wonderful it was 
really good. We originally had asked them to look at the Supreme Court case of Carson Besser's making, but there was not enough time for them to be able to brainstorm with the group. So they divided into 10 tables and they ran. Each one was so well prepared. It was amazing. It was just amazing how well prepared, well versed, and they were great. really understanding of the Harkins method and being able to discuss deeply a subject. And it was just a point. I had it with me, but I left my bag at central office discuss just the piece of literature and what it meant and ask very good questions and it's more yeah. about digging deep into content and it was just a beautiful way to end that's how we ended the session so again students which is why we are all here oh, how cool. they were great Ashley <laughs> they were really great Ashley all of them I'm so excited to hear that um, they've presented I they've done there. Um, Harkness with us a few times at the school board and uh, yeah they really are something uh, it's it's a unique thing that that's happening at Harwood and spreading I mean that's what's cool about it um, that's really cool to hear I got to duck out you guys I'm sorry um, I'll okay. see you at our next meeting all right okay. take care, Thanks, take care. Bye, Bye. have a good Thanksgiving yeah. and, and Mike and the social studies teacher from Harwood were there yeah I just wanted to add one other piece about the, the meeting, not about that, but um, for the open meeting law section, Giuliano and I were both mm -hmm. there, um, and at the end we went up to talk with her, and she said, or they said that they would do a smaller meeting if we wanted to get our region together, and they would hold us, they would have us all <coughs> in, or come to us, mm -hmm. um, and because there is about twice as much information as she was able to get through mm -hmm, yeah. in the hour. That was a lot. Okay. So that might be something down the road. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, and we, the, the board chairs and superintendents uh, do that training with her. Uh, so we all had to do it last October for this part of the seven hours. I'm going to die here. Oh, no. What? My computer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't die. Uh, I need, I can't because of the owl being connected. Oh. I can't. It's in the power. So, and what type of connection does the owl have? Could I go to my computer? Oh, my computer's going to die, too, because I didn't bring <laughs> the connector. Right. Well, we don't have that much in the agenda. Go, Jill. OK. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I clearly need my glasses, because I keep skipping things. The superintendent's report. It's November. God, Thanksgiving really, is next really week. Is. I know. Oh, my computer's going to die. Yeah. So we had the quarter awards on November 3rd, and the student leadership facilitated that, which was wonderful. I think everyone appreciated it. There was a lot of fun activities that um, students from across the programs basically volunteered to participate in. So it was a, a lot of fun. Um, we had parent-teacher conferences that week also, um, and from what I've heard, staff always get nervous about these things, right? Mm -hmm. But when they were coming down to leave for the day um, after meeting with parents, that it was just lots of positive. I heard one of the teachers say, you know, there were a lot of tears, and I was like, really? And he goes, but they were happy tears because they were like, Aww. my child is finally in a place that they are happy and Aww. they're they feel good about and they're showing up every day and it's been amazing so it's always great to hear that um, I included on November 8th there was a vaccination clinic here and a few of the staff went and I decided to go over and saw that one of our EMS two students was in there providing vaccinations nice. so it was a great oh, photo op cool. yeah. so I made sure to include that <laughs> You all hopefully saw the press conference or at least coverage of it on one of the oh, news channels. Yeah, it was really great. It was, yeah. it was awesome. Um, we are you still are looking forward to getting a shot right now. Yeah. We're still looking forward to getting that um, right. mobile home to renovate. It hasn't come yet because it's not quite ready for students to go into because of the potential for mold in there. Um, mm I don't know why I said our business office is working to develop the schedule, because that really was the budget. <laughs> but you know the schedule is on my mind when that comes out. <laughs> and um, last week was our first crazy weather day. Yeah. And I knew that Montpelier and, and uh, Barry were delaying because 
for Barry, the middle and elementary schools had a, a parent-teacher conference day just like Montpelier. And so there was that was going to close for those and just have the teachers attend. I thought Spalding was going to be delayed, mm -hmm. and I didn't get the message that they weren't um, going to have school until some parents let me know. <laughs> and at that point, we had a Harwood bus on the road. We had things going on, so we just stayed the stream. And there was um, there were some parents who were a little frustrated and didn't feel like it was safe. And there was also some folks that were great because your kids need to be able to go to work when the snow is an inch mm -hmm. and, yeah, and it's yeah. slippery. They still need to show up, and so. It worked out well. We had enough folks in the cafeteria to provide lunch for them, because oh, um, that's okay. usually the biggest oh, issue, yeah, is yeah. we don't have the services that would normally be here on days if Spalding yeah. closes. And uh, Chris and I have communicated to make sure that we don't miss a message <laughs> in the future. So that's good. It, it worked out really well, and we actually had over 2 thirds of our students here, despite the fact that two of our sending schools were closed. Wow. So great. it was great, yeah. <laughs> Any of the kids from the sending schools here? Almost all of Barry's were here. Yeah. Our kids were here. Too. That's great. Yeah, you're, you you yeah. weren't closed. Twin yeah, we were wasn't closed. closed. They must no, everybody here. that was open, that wasn't a problem. Right. Montpelier had the hardest time, and it's because they didn't have transportation, would be right. my assumption. So that makes so sense. And they also had a miles. half a day. They already were having a half right. a day that day, so right. which is what pushed. And they don't have to attend if their school is closed. Yeah, I was just curious yeah. if, if they would right. show or not. if. They saw Montpelier was closed, and we were like, no. They didn't come from Montpelier, mostly. Yeah. Those are the biggest uh, absences we had. And we had a couple of incidents where, because the bus wasn't on schedule um, in one district, a couple people missed it. So mm -hmm. it was around those things. And we have our open house this week, 5.30 to 7.30 yeah, Thursday great. night. Come on in if you can. Yep. Go ahead, Guy. Jody, are you still doing the legislative piece? Yes, at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, okay. I invited the legislators okay. to come in at 5 o'clock. I think I'm going to be in this room, 127, and I'm putting together a little um, PowerPoint presentation with each of the APA pieces um, and some of the other great things that we're doing, so just talking about those things. That's great. Are you saying you're hosting the legislators here? I invited all the legislators to come to open nice. house and asked if they wanted to come early that they could come and meet with me and we could talk about some of the things the center's working towards and yes. some concerns. And so I've sent both of those letters as well to them. Okay. To all of our towns. Awesome. To all of our representatives. Yeah, that's yes. what I mean, yeah. Great. Awesome. That's a lot. Thank you. All right, uh, accounts payable for October. We did get that in email. Yep. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, do we have any resignations or new hires? Not that the board has to approve, but if you got a chance to see the newsletter that went out, we have a brand new administrative assistant finally, so that front yeah, desk is covered. Yeah. We're super excited to welcome Anna Ryan to CVCC. Um, we did take her out of a, a position next door oh. <laughs> so she was working in the um, student services department um, with the counseling service in Spalding and she did opt to come over to us which is super exciting because she has a lot of familiarity with our systems and with infinite campus and so I feel like this is gonna really help out and soon she'll be the one sending the board Yay. packets. <laughs> great. That's great. 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 Yes. Thank you. All right, so our next two agenda items are executive session. We're a little ahead of schedule. I'm wondering, should we do the negotiations committee executive session first? Okay. Yes. Do you know, are this? Just to let you know that we do have um, this the student and uh, their family here. Oh, okay. Okay. So we should do the student hearing oh, yeah. first. They're here already. So they should come up here then, right? Um, They're in yes. the building, Stephanie? They're in the building, but we need to make sure we yes, shut off cameras. Yeah, they're yeah. right here in the front yeah, we office. Should move. Should we go to a different room? We should move to a different room so that we yeah. don't have to. But we need to be able to bring in. This could give give me uh, some charging status for the folks that are online. But how are you going to bring them in with that? Oh, you will just bring the camera. I'll just bring the computer. Yeah, and then you can. 
charge. Mm. That won't work so well. She's got yeah, it won't work so left. well because they won't I've be able. I've got 42 able. minutes left. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So hmm. you'll make it. You'll make it. I think. Can you make a room? I can make a room from this meeting mm -hmm. and just ask you to stop recording. Yeah. I think that might be the easiest because otherwise we won't be able to. Yeah. Well, whoops, I can't do oh, it yet, yet because okay. we have to. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to go into executive session. The language is on our agenda. If someone mm -hmm. wants to make that motion. I move that the board enter into executive session for the purpose of a student hearing. In addition, I'd like to invite the superintendent superintendent and the impacted party. Second. Seconded by Lyman. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. So we are now in executive session. Okay. So we are now in the executive session. Um, do we have a motion? Uh, I make the motion that we uphold the decision of the superintendent. I'll second that. Seconded by four. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay. All right, the ayes have it, and we have upheld the superintendent's disciplinary action in this case. Okay. Now we need to go back, back into for a second hearing. Yeah, question like. All right, so um, now we need a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of a student hearing. In addition, I would like to invite the superintendent and the affected party. And the affected party. <coughs> All right, do we have a second? Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, okay. so we're going back into executive session. Okay, we are now out of executive session. Do we need to be recording? We, so got we got the, yeah. we got the yeah. clerk taking the um, minutes. We're do I have a motion? Uh, I'll move to affirm the administration decision regarding the related decision. Okay. Do we have a motion to uphold the administration's decision. Do we have a second? Guy. Second. Guy. Guy. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Opposed. Okay. All right. The ayes have it. So we have a call for administration's decision. Now you just have an executive session for negotiation? Yes. So we should go tell them for decision. Have a hearing. Yeah. 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 Let's take a quick restroom break and yeah and then can i ask you guys about just some record keeping right now okay. I, uh, okay, yeah i was in the second for the oh it was guy i, I have you guy as in the first student matter did you second going in did you get it by any chance Jim? so i might think you did okay so i have you guys i just want to make sure <laughs> I will be really glad. Is there a lot of I don't think Yeah, I don't think What about the one out there, right? There's one next door. Oh. And there's one out there, too. Thank you all. I'm sorry that was super complicated. No, thank you for dealing with all of us. Not easy.
So I think I can plug the owl back in now. We have to do this other executive session. I know. Yeah. But it's still better. Oh, you need to do it on the food? Yeah, it has sure. And then Orca is probably patiently waiting. Yes. Okay, we uh, have everyone back in. We are looking for a motion to go into executive session. The language is on our agenda at the bottom of the first page. Do you want to make that motion? I move that the board enter into executive session for the purpose of a negotiations update. <laughs> As premature uh, general public knowledge would clearly place the board and the association involved at a substantial disadvantage. In addition, we'd like to invite Superintendent Jody Emerson into the executive session. Second. Okay. Nine. All right. Do we need to go into a breakout because of the ORCA? Yep. Okay. But you have to vote. Oh, sorry. Any opposed? I thought no, but everyone. I thought I heard eyes. No, all those in favor say aye. Okay, all those in favor of going to executive session say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, sorry. Did somebody say nay? I know. I thought guys said aye, so I thought I had already asked. But yeah, I'm getting punchy. Yeah, we're getting punchy. You have a really full agenda in December to talk through the budget. I think that's going to take the majority of our time, we, and that deserves our time. That's our big um, charge as a, as a board. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, um, thank you. everyone. Yeah, nice to see you all. Not easy. Thank right. you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Orca.